Hi there guys, um, I just want to make a short um, little vlog video um, about something that's been running around in my head for a long time. Um, one of the things that I find I'm frequently up against is a kind of mindset. It's not a particular leader like Trump, it's not a particular policy, um, it's not um, some institution that I find that I'm at war with. I find that my biggest battle, my biggest struggle is against a mindset, the minds, a mindset which is the sort of consensus mindset. But what I think I've figured out, different from other people who've butted their heads against this, is that this mindset of consensus is, it, its engine is what I call a teacher's pet mentality. Uh, so, <clears throat> if you if you kind of if you look around the world, rebellion has become like a commodity. To be a rebel is sort of the norm. Um, and I think that all the areas which were once rebellious, which were once controversial, which were once um, dangerous, have now become very mainstream, and they've been co-opted. Uh, th these areas have been taken over um, by people, by posers, people who are actually, uh, when you peel away, they're just the, the teacher's pets you knew at school. Um, so rock and roll is always the go-to thing for me. And so if I think of rock and roll, but you could take hip hop, you could take folk music, you could take the art world, you could take academia, certainly. All these things at one time would have been the sort of domain of, of outsiders, the domain of people who otherwise didn't have a voice in the mainstream society, but now they have become engines of the mainstream society. Media is another one. Journalism used to be a bohemian practice, but it's now no longer a bohemian practice. It's uh, um, it's the preserve. Well, I was going to say the establishment, but that's become a cliche now. So the, the whole Brexit Trump thing has created this kind of cliche of the of the establishment, which is a kind of fake concept, really. There's no one establishment. There's no conspiracy. And I think we should always be aware of people who are trying to say that. But the the what I think it really is, what I think that establishment is, is a, the vested interest of the teacher's pet, the people who are basically used to having it going their own way. And I've kind of got some notes here, right? just some brief notes, which I, I wrote down, and they're kind of... <clears throat> three core features of the teacher's pet mentality which you will recognize and which must be fought against and um, basically the number one one is that they're all, they're used to being on the right they're used to being getting top A's in in, in class they're used to uh, getting a pat on the head they're used to getting the gold star they're used to getting the feedback and of affirmation um, which typically a true rebel or, a, or someone who would, would traditionally have veered into rock and roll or ideas would not have got, which would have driven, and that lack thereof would have driven them into creative exploits. But the teacher's pet <clears throat> is essentially a conservative person because they, they, they've never had to work to get that adoration, to get that affirmation, to get that validation. And they're used to being always right. They're used to being the one who answers first in class, puts their hand up, and the teacher goes, good, well done. And so one of the features of that is that they're very annoyed when someone, when, when other people emerge who are taking their place because they have grown up only knowing one reality, which is I'm right, the teacher loves me, daddy loves me, and uh, they, they, they fully resent anyone coming up who might not be as intelligent as them, might not have the same advantages intellectually, but who's making an attempt to put their hand up and answer the question and have their voice heard in competition with them. And I've noticed this in, in the music scene, and I've noticed it in academia, and I've noticed it in journalism. These people <clears throat> like to build their own castles around their teacher's pet ego. And anyone who comes through who might have a kind of a fledgling or fragile kind of attempt to 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 um, negotiate with the the 
the the the art form in, or the 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 area of study or whatever it is that's that's kind of the territory that's being fought over gets slapped down. So you basically you 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 you're either a teacher's pet or you're nothing. You hit the ground running or you're slapped down. You can't be uh, the tortoise in the tortoise and the hare. There's only the hare. There's only the fast guys. There's only the the sort of in the golden boys. And if you're not one of those, then you get slapped down. So the idea being, you can't really develop. They're they're they're, they're so they've they've come up in the preserve of of, of their um of adoration and validation and anyone who's coming in who maybe not be as talented or as clever or as quick-witted or you know who, who wants to develop themselves that's not allowed and so now we're living in a culture where um there is a kind of elite but it's not an elite of wealth and it's not an elite of establishment or aristocracy it's an elite of teachers pets and you know it's the kind of benedict cumberbatch types you know they run the world and it's not because of their wealth it's because they're they have this sort of um, unperturbed, naive confidence, um, and and that can that can veer into a resentment of anybody who's coming through who who doesn't immediately um, display the full sort of um, honors and medals that they have been used to winning with ease. Um, <clears throat> the second one is that they want it both ways. This, this is the other feature of these people. Is particularly find this in academia, journalism, and music right now, which are all, in my view, dissident occupations for Bohemian people, um, for people who can only really have an outsider's perspective. But what's happened is, is that these teachers' pets have realised that there's some kudos, there's something in this being an outsider thing being the rebel, being the sort of uh, windswept folk hero riding into town. So they want to be, they, they kind of adopt the mannerisms and the clothes and the fashion of the kind of outsider cowboy strolling into into town, you know. But underneath the veneer of that is really still this teacher's pet uh, golden boy thing. So they want it both ways. They want to have that, um, they want the, the, the credibility, the street cred of being... The, the man with no name riding into town on you know, on his pale horse fighting for justice but also they they, they want to have one foot in the established uh, uh, town elders uh, validation and 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 the in group they want to be they, they, they're firmly rooted in the in group but they want to adopt the mannerisms of the out group because that gives them a sort of street cred and they know that it isn't really cool to be like David Cameron or something like that so they they adopt that. <clears throat> the third one is that they're just very entitled. Um, these people, <clears throat> and I'm not just talking, this is, is, is important to know, I'm not just talking about the people like the sort of, um, I mean, they do annoy me, the Osbournes and the Camerons and, and the sort of the classic Tory um, establishment figures piss me off as much as anyone. But they're not the threat because they're easily identifiable. The ones who are the threat are these people who want it both ways, the teacher's pets who've adopted the rebels veneer. And they, they, they have total hegemony now over, over, the, over the rebellious arts, over the dissident arts, over the bohemian occupations. And trust me, I know this because I've been, in, in the last 10, 15 years, been in some level trying to break into these, these things. And I noticed that there is this hegemony of um, teacher's pet um, <clears throat> uh, elites who, who who kind of form their own little in group and the 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 the, the entitlement ma that I'm talking about manifests itself in this sort of assumption presumption of being the guardian of what's good and what's bad. So anyone that comes in who again might not have the initial talent, the, the initial boof, oomph, but is someone who's curious, wants to learn, who's got a creative energy, they're wiped out immediately. They are dangerous elements, um, and it's not hard to wipe someone out like that because they're not. They don't have the initial. They don't have usually have the confidence. They don't usually have the the validation, and they don't. They don't have the natural gifts which I elevate someone to teacher's pet right status right away. So these people are are very adept at eliminating the the uh, fledgling voices. Let's put it like that, which are really the lifeblood of of any dissident art of any 
Yeah, or, or, or they're they're really the lifeblood of society. I think in in the, in the sense of I've spoken spoken about it earlier in in other ways. Um, in the sense of the sort of being unacknowledged legislators and the way that Shelley, in his famous defense of poetry, wrote that you you need to have that kind of fledgling, curious, um, um, always learning, always de developing voice for society and culture and the notion of citizenship and freedom and liberty to evolve and for and for a society to survive if if all you've got is a sort of elite of in-group guardians who have a kind of established way of things then you're not then the society will wither and die and that's basically what happens to every civilization and what happens to any movement in art is that there, it becomes codified so you need actually the fledgling voices the people who are actually outsiders. They're not really the most talented. They're not. They're, they're not really the most um, uh, impressive for, uh, right away. But, but but they are. But their their disadvantages become an advantage because they are always learning. They're always they're 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 curious and they're they're hungry. It gives it, it, the fledgling voice is always hungry to to be heard in the way that the the guardian teacher's pet. Um, <clears throat> sort of priesthood, let's look at that. priesthood, um, is not, and and the priesthood is is usually just uh, is usually just solely concerned with defending its hierarchy. And if you want to, my view on why the arts are so boring these days, uh, why there's no real innovation going on, um, it's because no fledgling voices are given a minute's chance. Because the the priesthoods of teachers' pets, and, it, and again, it's not wealth, it's not family lineage, it's not aristocracy, it's not um, social standing. It's teachers' pets, people who there's a sort of um, worship of cleverness and snarky smugness that's that that's that's crept into everything these days, and particularly in the dissident arts, this is a real toxic poison. Um, <clears throat> and 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 that that sort of priesthood mentality that we are the guardians of 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 what's right from wrong um is really dangerous and you might think well why am i ranting about this why am i is this kind of some defensive rant and maybe it's a, maybe it is a defensive rant um but i it's 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 it comes from experience i've tried a number of different fields all of whom all of which are um, encased and uh, um, ossified um, in this kind of moribund mentality of the teacher's pet, the people who are used to being on the right all the time, so that they, 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 they're very affronted by anybody who would attempt to open their, their mouth and make a mistake or, or say anything wrong, because it's always this competition to, me, 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 I got it right! Um, and the they they want it both ways because they they understand that there's some credibility in being the underdog, so they want to have all the power of being in the in group of being in the priesthood, but they want to have the credibility of being uh, the underdog, and they're just very entitled. The 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 the, the their experiences and their um <clears throat> their valid their constant sort of. Uh, sense of adoration, self adoration, and validation has given them such a, a conceit in their own minds that they they really do consider themselves to be the entitled ones. And I think if you want an example from journalism, we saw that with the way that people dismissed, 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 dismissed Donald Trump, and now are whining and wailing like it's someone else's fault that he's in power when it really they know deep down it's their fault for, for acting like this in-group priesthood, scoffing at any fledgling voice. And now and now you've got a bully who's who, who all those fledgling voices have said, okay, you're going to bully me into silence? Here's my bully. And he's fucking bigger and scarier than your bully. And and uh, I can already hear the no, 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 no types. Because anybody who denies that is themselves a teacher's pet. Because cause you... you, you in order to, 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 to even entertain this possibility, you have to sort of start dismantling your own sense of entitlement. But the real reason why, I'm, why, I, th why I think it's important to talk like this is because I, I, what I'm about is the fledgling voice.
That's what's interesting to me. That's what rock and roll is. It's the fledgling voice. It's the voice that hasn't found its footing yet. It's the voice that hasn't found the right words yet. It's the it's the idea that's still emerging. It's the um, the talent that's that's not yet found or developed its craft. That's that is the root of civilization and culture. And anything which seeks to pam it down and slam it down, um, however much it, it adopts the veneer of being uh, dissident or or um, the underdog in some way, is really actually the enemy of truth because truth can only emerge from those fledgling voices and poetry can only emerge from those fledgling voices and frankly beauty can only emerge from those fledgling voices and that's something that Plato knew fine well um, in, in, in his uh, understanding of beauty and the soul. The soul must always be developing, the soul must always be in a, in a kind of uh, process of self-expansion and flourishing and education and only then can can you can you ever have uh, any chance of developing a sustainable idea of beauty and transcendent good in the world and and i think the, to put it in to put that in evolutionary terms it's the only way society is going to survive and keep going but anyway that's my first entry for what will probably be quite a few uh, soapbox moments um if you're at all interested in anything that I'm saying here and you want to find out about my music, you can find me at SoundCloud slash James Black Folk, anywhere James Black Folk. Um, and I also do a weekly podcast, uh, Fear of a Black Planet, and there'll be a new episode coming out uh, very shortly. Okay, thank you for listening.